Hi, welcome to Women Who Code Conversations. My name is Shauna Gregory and I am the Chief Program Officer at Women Who Code. Hi everyone, my name is Gracie Castaldi. I am the Program Manager of Digital Community at Women Who Code. We are celebrating Women Who Code's 10 year anniversary. Uh, we are going to reflect on our journey and share some experiences. Uh, so first of all, I want to start this conversation by remembering um, like some time ago when we first met Shana, do you remember that? Yeah, I think it yeah was. Absolutely. so when we were both volunteers, I was living in New York, no, New York City. I think I was living in New York City at the time and had met you at Connect in San Francisco. Yes, yes, I remember the same. I remember seeing your face, but we never talked to each other, right? I think we were, I mean, we, we took some pictures, we have some photos together, but I don't remember talking to you. There were so many volunteers. Yeah. Uh, yes, but then the next year we had Connect again. Um, in San Francisco also, I think it was in Pinterest. Yes. Uh, we had a leadership summit. You were already a full-time employee at Women Who Code. And I remember seeing you and talking to you. Uh, and I think I brought you some Mexican candies, right? And snacks. You did. Yes. yes. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> that was one of my favorite things about um, the leadership summits and getting the volunteers together from all over the world is everyone brings their favorite treats and it's just a really fun time. Yes, yes, I also remember that it was amazing, this leadership summit, and then we had the conference, and I remember seeing all these diverse speakers, and it was great for me. I remember um, seeing a speaker from Mexico, actually, uh, a director from Mexico City, Loida, and I said, okay, next year, I will be a speaker at Connect. <laughs> like, I, I set my goal there when I, when I saw her speaking at the event. And you were that happened yes yes <laughs> it happened it was digital i mean an online conference but it happened that's amazing yes uh so yeah where were you at that time i mean in 2018 you were still a volunteer i was a volunteer too i remember i was working i think as a user experience designer uh here in monterey mexico so i had to travel at that time and I remember going to every talk that was about user experience. You know, I was all into that. Uh, what about you? Sure. When I was a volunteer, I worked in product management for a few years uh, locally in Boston. And I was a director at Women Who Code as a volunteer role and as just something to be able to expand my community. Um, I've moved to many different cities and worked in different roles. So I moved from San Francisco to New York and New York to Boston. Each time I moved, I found my Women Who Code community and it was like a way to establish myself in a new city and a new job. That is awesome. Yeah. And how did you learn about Women Who Code? How did you get involved in the first place? Sure. So I was working um, before I was a product manager, I was a program manager for a coding boot camp. And I was helping people who were underrepresented in tech careers find jobs as developers after they finished the program. And I was encouraging them to expand their network and to, to meet more people who were in the industry. And so I would bring my students to Women Who Code events and eventually started hosting them at my office and then became a volunteer. And it was just a really good way, like I mentioned, to have that community outside of work too. Um, and not, you know, spend all of my time in my own office and be able to just meet other people. What about you? How did you learn about Women Who Code and get involved? Oh, well, we started the Monterey Network. Um, I think it was in 2015. I started it with Pamela, one, one of my friends. Um, and, you know, it was the same story. I think I was the only... Um, the only woman in my team. So I started looking for communities. So she told me I want to start this Women Who Code Network. I didn't know ever, anything about it, but just with the name, I thought, okay, this is a good idea. So we started and we had, you know, a few events and very few people came to our events. That's so funny at the beginning. Uh, but, you know, with, with time, more people started coming and, and we had more speakers. 
and more companies wanted to support us. So it was it was great at the end, you know, many people joined and now it's a big community here in Monterey. Do you remember your first event that you had? Yes, actually it was the, the very first Women Code event here in Monterey. Uh, we had it in a university, my university actually, I was there. Um, and I think 10 people, around 10 people came to the event. It was okay. I mean, we yeah. had a good conversation. That's great. And I'm sure you made some connections with them because it was such a small group. Yes, that's right. Okay, so now let's talk about the work we do at Women Who Code. Do you want to share your journey here, sure. your initial job and <laughs> everything else? I'll try to summarize. So um, I just had my three-year anniversary at Women Who Code full-time. So I joined in January of 2019 and I joined as the global leadership manager. So as someone who had been a volunteer, it was my job to then manage volunteers and help everyone organizing events around the world. Um, we were able to organize a lot of regional and global conferences and travel to India and Singapore and Berlin, uh, met up with Gracie in Mexico. There were a lot of just amazing events that year. Um, I then became global leadership director and we started growing our program team to support more volunteers and activities around the world. Um, obviously, we've been remote for the last couple of years and um, have been focusing on just expanding our digital communities, uh, which I'm sure Gracie would love to talk about. And my current role is the chief program officer, and I'm working more on the strategic vision of Women Who Code programs, I'm still leading our, our program team, and I'm just really excited to see all the things we're going to do this year. Gracie, do you okay. want to talk about the digital community? Yes, I can start with that. Um, so I was a director, I was a volunteer, then I joined as a full-time employee last year. And now what I do is that I lead uh, the six technical tracks. If you don't know about them, they are blockchain, cloud, data science, front-end, mobile, and Python. So we have these six uh, technical tracks. They are all uh, online. So we have these online communities uh, in Slack, social media, and we also organize events. Uh, so I am leading them. We have one leadership fellow for each one of them. So I am leading the fellows. They are doing a great job. And I also help with um, organizing events for our sponsors. So we have um, usually also track events, but with sponsors. So they are also great because we have great engineers from our partners and sponsors talking about you know, some technical topics um, and I really enjoy what I do. Uh, I wanted to ask you, do you want to share your favorite programs, talks, events, conferences, anything that's your favorite? Sure, um, let me think. So I would say I really enjoy all of our conferences. I loved attending them as a volunteer and member. I love um, then being on the, the other side of actually organizing and attending. It was more fun to attend as a volunteer, but it, it's definitely more rewarding as an organizer to get to um, you know orchestrate all of the people coming together from around the world. Um, now that we have the conferences remotely, Obviously, there are pros and cons to both, and we miss the in-person travel, but what we've seen is that there are just, there's so much more opportunity for people to join who can't travel to San Francisco for several days and take time off from their lives to do so. Um, so I've really enjoyed the digital conferences too. And what's your favorite program, event, moment that comes to mind? Oh, I have many. Uh, I will say Connect as well. Uh, I really miss going to in-person conferences uh, in San Francisco, but then the first um, virtual connect that we had in 2020, I think that was my favorite. I was a speaker there and I was so nervous, but you know, when I remember, it's, it's one of my favorite memories. Uh, then here in Monterey, we had a couple of events for International Women's Day. Uh, it's called We Lead, uh, and they are doing it this year as well. So that was also because it was my first time organizing like a big event when I was a volunteer. Uh, then also when we went to Merida together, we had a leadership summit there and 
the anniversary event for the Merida Network. I also like that. And now that I am working with the tracks, all the track events and with sponsors, I really enjoy them. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to ask you one more question. If you can share, Shana, what you have seen over the years, like how it has changed, any good change that you see in the community? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know that when I joined as a member initially, I think we had around 50,000 members for Women Who Code. And I remember thinking that was such a massive number. And now we're close to 300,000. Um, so definitely I've seen just growth over the years and the number of people who recognize uh, Women Who Code and our mission and, and understand what we're doing has been really encouraging too. Um, I've seen just people that I've met you know, six or more years ago who were starting out in their careers or they felt like they were kind of stagnant and not really sure if they wanted to stay in tech. And now so many of them are managing teams or starting their own companies or, you know, just really coming out of their shell. So seeing the career growth of people that I've gotten to meet over the years has been really amazing and rewarding. Yes, that's true. And I think as we always say, we are changing the face of technology because now we have more representation. Uh, we are always encouraging underrepresented people to apply to speak. We have many, um, like all the year, I think we have CFPs for people to apply to speak at our events. Even if it's a small webinar, a workshop or a big conference, we're always encouraging people to apply. Um, and I think that that's really important. We are working with you know, increasing representation. Yeah, and I think it's also important that because we're a global community, people understand that tech and tech companies and people who work in engineering roles exist outside of San Francisco and outside of the United States, outside of Silicon Valley. Um, and that's something that I feel like we're really bringing forward is that we are a really global community and there are people who are doing really important work in different countries and different parts of the world and um, being able to connect everyone together and have them learn from each other has been really amazing. So I love our events as well. I know we've talked a lot about our big conferences, but our, our daily events are really amazing too. And um, it's great that people are, you know, dedicating their time and energy to supporting our movement. That's what makes a community, right? Everyday events, in small interactions like in Slack, social media, anything counts. So we are creating big communities there. Yes, even with your first event of 10 people, that's still, it's about the quality of the interaction not the quantity of people. And that's how you really that's make it. That's right, yes. Yes, you know, the first event was with 10 people and my last event, my last in-person event here in Monterey was with a hundred people. So that's when you see the difference. Yeah, amazing. Yes. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I just want to invite people to get involved, to apply to speak. We have an ongoing track CFP if you want to apply to speak at one of our events. We will leave the link here. Uh, and what else, Shana? Do you want yeah, to share anything uh, else? Just don't be afraid to give your first talk if you've never given a, a presentation or you're worried about public speaking. We have a lot of resources to support you through giving your first conference talk and um, don't feel like you need to be you know PhD level expert in some area like everyone has something to share and we really encourage you to think about what that is and get support from your community to deliver your first talk if that's something you're interested in. Yes thank you so much for being here today. Yeah thank you Gracia see you later thanks everyone. Bye thank you. Mm -hmm.